program began when um, our partnership with Taller Puerto Riqueño in North Philadelphia, they were looking for something innovative for teenagers to do. Uh, the summer program um, is basically teaching a group of teenagers, uh, mostly from the Latino community in Philadelphia, how to make films. And the best way to do that from the Big Picture Alliance perspective has always been to actually make films. So it really developed from this partnership with Big Picture Alliance, uh, Taller Puerto Riqueño, and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Over the years, the, um, the tone, the tenor of it changed, and uh, we, we picked up another community partner, a Congreso. And this year we picked up Esperanza Academy. And uh, they basically thought that it would be wonderful to make films, but they wanted more community involvement. So for the first two weeks now, we usually spend time at the museum. Um, and then we spend the rest of the summer in the community. The opening week of the summer program was especially exciting and challenging because that's when you're just getting to know us. Some of them are just meeting for the first time. I'm Jared and you're not. <laughs> The thing is, is that we got to get them comfortable interacting as a group, um, collaborating, and that's why it's really important for us to jump head first in giving them activities to do. So you're going to make eye contact with the person, and you're going to look at them and say, B, and then they're going to look to the next person and say, B. Beep. 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 <laughs> Beep. Beep. Like for example, we have a game called Me Too that we do, and you you stand in a circle, and you you know say you step in the circle. Each person steps in the circle, says their name, and just says something about their, their themselves. And if like if I say my name is Dwight and I love pizza, you know I step in the circle and I say that. Whoever else in the circle who loves pizza, they'll step in the circle and say, me too, in unison. Uh, <laughs> my name is Sophie. Uh, uh -huh. Me gusta papas fritos. <laughs> the students responded in a kind of mixed way. Some of them were really into it. The ones who were shy were really nervous. Um, but as we did them, the more we did them, the more they got used to it, the more, the, the more they got over their shyness. And they kind of warmed up to dinner, and some of them started liking it. So it's good. The theme this year was uh, decorative arts and world c cultures when they were here at the museum. And this was to give them a foundation in what it means to um, have connections, not only visual connections, but intercultural connections. The first two weeks of the program, we did a lot of hands on art um, exploring. They were guided by three tremendous museum educators. For the most of the students, it was the first time that they were in the museum. It was the first time that they actually saw real art um, outside of a poster, outside of graffiti, or outside of whatever they're used to. Very good. So there are 13 tapestries. And the t uh, museum educators were great in breaking things down very simply in terms of symbols, what things represented, and how these things, or how they saw these types of things in their own lives, in their students' own lives. So these were made, and then what happened? You know what happened? They didn't work. So what did they do? While the students were at uh, Taller Puerto Ricano uh, during the second week of the program, um, the Taller Gallery featured an exhibition by an artist named Miguel Luciano, who was a Puerto Rican artist. And his form of art, I think, was um, the students could relate to very easily. It was very contemporary. Um, it wasn't highbrow art. Uh, it was basically art that commented on, it was satirical art. It commented on the social 
uh, issues facing youth, um, specifically urban youth of Latino background. I hate McDonald's now. I'm not eating McDonald's. Yo, let's go, black person. Damn, yeah, McDonald's, man, kill him now. I told you, you can't. It's, it's racist. How? Because they're trying to say that dark skinned people yeah, like chicken. Yeah. Everybody likes chicken now. Are you serious? There's Puerto Ricans that are dark skinned. Look, he has a Puerto Rican flag on his coat. I love the boy over there. You're missing the tooth. Yeah, I guess that's what you're trying to say. This year was the 100th anniversary of a uh, very famous Puerto Rican nationalist and poet named Juan Antonio Corotere. And um, we were given the honor of an explication of uh, one of Juan Antonio's poems by a contemporary poet named Che Melendez. Tu habitante verdadero, construiremos o oh espanto la guerra, haremos o oh gloria el combate. ¿Qué está diciendo? People, you need to real people. You need to look about what the poet tried to say. The poet tried to say. Is people you still you still need to find your paradise, and this is the, the most important part in all this. You know, we also got a chance of seeing art being produced, and this was a mural artist in north of Philadelphia, and the mural uh, the muralist was painting a large scale mural of Juan Antonio Cortez. It was a portrait, and the students got to see the artist work, and we also got to interview the artist. Face makes half of the space here. But since it's like inclined, it is not really half. So when I did this, I was taking this into consideration. We got to discuss the impact of a mural on a community. Uh, we got to discuss how outsiders visiting this neighborhood and how and how this mural would change the interpretation of you know what this neighborhood meant or what this neighborhood was and how this this portrait on the side of a building gave the gave an identity to this neighborhood it was really an opportunity for them to see how these design patterns not only were inspired by ancient cultures but these ancient cultures continue to live on through these modern artists that are using it so we wanted them to see that decorative arts, although they, they look like period pieces, although they seem very static here at the museum, they can come to life by looking at them in a new dimension. So the students this year used those world cultural um, tours in the museums to come up with designs and patterns that became woven into the films, but also had them thinking about, you know, how do cultures have an impact on society? You don't have to do with a pen. This time talking one with him. Yeah, don't do with the pen. Yeah. He doesn't really... The, what's unique about the summer film program is that the students are here, they're using studios just for them, they're using camera equipment that they would have never had access to. They're, they're really working with mentors who are filmmakers, who are arts educators, who are artists. I found this also. This is a Van Gogh. Van Gogh's in the museum. I'm sure most of you have heard of him. He painted this picture of the postman with wallpaper behind him. So it's another, just another art historical, historical image. And here's more images, just Ken Wiley's idea. It's really and they took uh, symbols from each, three, um, each of those three genres, from Asian art, from European art, and American art. They took symbols and, and they traced with these symbols and then they uh, filtered in little bits and pieces of their own life and they created a design that was sort of meshing contemporary life with each of those three genres of art. The process itself was a great um, starting point to, for, a for a collaboration effort to create a film. What the students did was explore a work of art, put their own um, put bits and pieces of their own life into it and then create a whole new work of art which was very similar to um, how we created films. What they got to do was create a really unique one-of-a-kind wallpaper large scale I think it's about 54 by 56 and um, it's you know repetition just like any wallpaper but if you look at the details closely you get to see little bits and pieces of each uh, student's life 
and what each student got to experience in this program. So it's really special. These students are coming from different schools, from you know different um, groups, different ages, different races, and so it was this idea of restorative practices is how you um, restore community. Whether something happened or whether a problem exists or whether there's a concern, it's about overcoming that problem and continuing to work together. This is a trick question. Anybody from last year? Brown, Brown versus the Board of Education. Exactly. Brown versus the Board of Education was about schools not being equal. Because basically the girl was saying that because the, the white guy, he was acting, supposed to be acting black, mm -hmm. because she believed that it's all about the hip-hop culture. Mm -hmm. And he didn't define it about acting black. He defined it as this is the way it is. That's his style. Mm -hmm. And that's a style that many people use. He didn't see it as a um, defining as acting black. We're going to see that even though we all watch the same thing, mm -hmm. some of us will think that what happened was different, that she attacked him, he attacked her, or someone will see that the impact was different, that that boy is going to go home and, I don't know, kick his cat. Or someone will think that that girl is going to go home and drink a bottle of whiskey and drown her sorrows. You know, we don't know the impact. And we invited John Bailey, who was from the International Institute of Restorative Practices, to actually sit with the teens. They interviewed him. They wrote in their journals about restorative practices. And it was important because they had that as a foundation before they got into their groups to make those films. Particularly for, um, like I said before, I know from my prior work and then my work with Trouble Teens and now my work with uh, organizing, training, consulting, that when communities are stronger, when relationships are stronger, it means less young people going into the system, uh, you know, prison, jail, things like we that. We actually took a small incident that happened, and it was just as an example. Uh, what happened was we had had lunch with the students, and some soda was spilled. So the, the role was that the mean museum director was going to fire the staff worker who let the students spill soda. And then the students um, decided that they would play kind of the peer moderator. And they came in and they tried to calm down the director and calm down Francisco, who was playing the role of the staff member that was getting yelled at. And he was getting upset. Oh, yeah, I have to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on here? What's going on? What's the problem? I walked in here yesterday. And she found mine. So I have to do it later because. Can, can you because sit down, please? Hold on. Dwayne, can you come over here, Dwayne, for me? Dwayne, please. 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 Be in charge of this program and to keep these kids in line because I heard all about these teenagers from North Philadelphia. And now I'm I working for the best inside of the world. And I heard about teens and they don't listen and teens don't do anything and teens are just. Horrible teen people. Well, will you come in during the program so we just so you can see, you know, why are we doing the program and everything? I mean, if I was just an accident, just for now I have to up. kill mice. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, I'll take care of the mice, all right? I'll hire exterminator. Now you go back to your job. Come on, we're solving this problem. Thank you for talking to me. I'm glad right. that you can help me solve this. I'll take care of Toy. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So that experience of you know thinking of working in a team of collaboration of conflict resolution, that was the whole reason for introducing restorative justice within this program. And I felt with this group, even the students were saying that they just felt so close to one another from the beginning through to the end. And so I'm very proud that, that I feel that that restorative justice aspect had an impact on them. One aspect of the curriculum this summer was interviewing technique. The students we're supposed to learn how to interview someone, how to conduct an interview, how to film. And we also you know, taught them basic elements about the camera, about lighting, about sound. And so what we did, we had them film the practice interviews that they did. And then we were able to screen these practice interviews and constructive, constructively critique them. All right, All right. take it there. Right so I gotta say, um, quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Sound. Sound. And then you say speed. Speed. And then roll camera. Roll camera. Rolling. Action. So Tyrese, uh, where do you see what do you see the role? Like this gentleman has a shiny face. No, no, I said that. So he's bringing makeup and he powder him down. 
He's got sweat in there. But uh, right now you see like these highlights, right? It's very much like the, uh, the behind the scenes, behind the scenes. I just, I just um, learned on my computer how to get any program on the go. Well, we are really fortunate this year also not only to have um, the person from the International Institute of Restorative Practices, but also to have the curator, Jack Hinton, who's here in our Department of um, American Art. And so they actually interviewed him, and they did, they did a great job. They shot it. They, you know, a couple of students were the actual interviewers, and, you know, they set up the background for the interview and asked the questions, and it was a wonderful experience for them. I was in a, in a college in, in London that was next door to somewhere called the Courtauld Institute of Art. And so I was, you know, so I was at college next door to it. And, um, you know, kind of became aware of it and had its own museum. And then I stopped doing the degree I was doing because I just, I just couldn't get to grips with it. You know, it was all, it was economics. And I met here in Philly um, a, a curator called Dean Walker. But I mean, he was, I mean, he was just very kind of um, enthusiastic. And, Talk to you about your career. Mm -hmm. uh, this past week, we have been learning about the museum, specifically decorative arts. Can you give us a general idea of, of what decorative arts uh, is? can be defined if we think about? Um, you know what it isn't, and basically it's it's not painting and it's not drawing. It's it's you know, objects around us, at least in terms of the of the museum definition. So it can be um, metal work, it can be uh, weavings, it can be uh, architectural fragments. So it was actually a very uh, important exercise because they interweaving all these different things. They learned about a future career opportunity to become a curator like Jack Hinton is here at the museum. They learned about the actual filming procedure and they also learned to work together. <laughs> Make sure we can see you in here. Keep going. Keep going. Look at that girl right there. Look at that girl right there. Look at her face. Are you leaving? Shh. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. When they gonna leave? I don't know. What's the girls doing in the bathroom? I don't know, but I hear funny noises. I'm hearing some noises I shouldn't be hearing from a woman. <laughs> Remember your line that you need to say in the scene. Um, okay. When it comes to the, the acting exercises, the, the acting techniques, um, it's really important for us to get the students to just completely kind of forget themselves, get over whatever self-consciousness they might have. Um, because ultimately, they're going to be acting in the film. So if they're going to be able to play whatever character is required to be played in the script. Because sometimes, you know, the characters that they write are nothing like them. So we do various acting exercises. We do one called Bus Stop, which pretty much allows the students to create different characters and try to get involved in these little scenarios to try to get a goal, which is always essential in, in a character's um, acting in a play or a movie. A character usually has a goal, something they're trying to do. So the students, one student will be sitting at a bus stop and each student has to take turn to come up and without, we do it without saying anything, so we do it non-verbally at first. So you, a student gets up and without saying anything, they have to create a character and do some kind of action, some kind of behavior to get the person sitting at the bus stop to get up so they can sit down. Um, and that usually, you know, they really get excited about that because sometimes they create some bizarre characters like old people or, you know, a pregnant lady or, you know, a blind person. Oh. Oh. Also, always do our um, vocal vocal warm up, so we have them do a lot of tongue twisters. 
Um, some of them are pretty basic, but the point is not is to get them to learn to speak clearly, slowly, and loudly. Which wrist watch is the Swiss wrist watch? Which wrist watch is the Swiss wrist watch? Which wrist watch is the Swiss wrist watch? Which watch is the Swiss wrist watch? Very good. Which wrist watch? And you know, after after a few days, they slowly start to get it. And so, what I do, I have them work in groups. I have them be saying it in groups, and then I'll point to individuals so that they start learning to be in the spotlight by themselves. I believe he's eyes, right? That's your line. Okay. And you over there, your line is get out of my face. I can't die. I can't die. I can't die. So overall, the students, especially the ones who have a knack for acting, they're definitely um, excited about these games because they see the result. They see that, wow, you know, I'm getting better. You know, this is not as hard as I thought. You know, I'm overcoming my shyness. I'm becoming more confident. And they also see the link between presenting yourself in a scene in these acting exercises and maybe presenting yourself for a job interview or giving a standing up and giving a presentation in your class. So um, they, they definitely see that link and they, they start like really investing in it more. And by the end, they're like, you know, up there volunteering to do stuff. And this, this particular summer, I remember a couple of students who were just totally like intimidated. They wouldn't want to answer questions. They wouldn't raise their hands for nothing. And by the end, I remember a couple of them were volunteering to like do on-camera interviews. They were acting in the films and all that. So, you know, it definitely pays off. Comedy, uh, probably like a gun shootout. No, 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 yeah, but we try to we trying to show that it's bad, but we want to get away from the, the. We don't have to actually show violence. We can show a scene where you, and then you understand what's about to happen to the person because of what's what was the the. What's been built up to it. Yeah, and, um, and then you can black out. Treatment or a synopsis of the film. We sat around for a couple of days. We threw ideas out, and we came down to two, and uh, the students basically decided to go with one that would have been they thought a little. Uh, more interesting to produce. Alright, so. Yeah. We'll, we'll look at me first. 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 We'll look at me even though we were talking about that when I read what everybody wrote, I don't think everybody like bought into that concept. So that's why I'm trying to put both of them together. We actually, you know, read through the script, they break it down, they see what they need, all the needs. And so we talk about casting, auditioning, finding that right actors for the different roles. So Kevin said, yep, yeah, and then he gives him the brochure, right? Yeah. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, maybe just hands this. And he yeah, hands the brochure and then check this out. We have to do location scouting to figure out where we're going to shoot the various scenes, um, what props they might need. Um, then we get into the, the actual shooting of it with the um, whoever is going to be the camera operator, the director of photography. I didn't even yes. Quick rehearsal in the top. Y'all know your lines? And then when it's time to shoot, each person just, you know, step up to the plate, assume their job, their responsibility. Um, so if you're an actor, you're studying your lines, you're, you know, rehearsing your part, um, you know, getting everything you need for your scene, for your character. And if you're the director, you're kind of overseeing everything with the assistance of which, whatever teacher teachers are with you in that group you know that we're supervising them but they're you know just handling it themselves pretty much feel how i feel about the trucks right now ruining all our shots i don't know how i feel about the shots that are ruining all our our, our trucks that are you ruining the shots i just want to you know. it's my first time doing this so i don't know it's everybody's first time but not my foot i did that a lot of times so i don't want to say that word but but y'all did nice great work. thank you <laughs> you did great Tucker, you did good. Yeah, you won the Tucker boom. Right. You're the best part. You know that, right? No. Without you, we're nothing. It's no crazy. sound, no nothing. No sound. Once we're done shooting, 
um, it's time for post-production, which is when the films are edited. Um, so what we did this past summer is that we took a few days to actually teach all the students the basics about editing. You know, they edited little scenes and stuff like that just to get the practice. Then we, they also learned about music, how to either um, compose. Some of the students were able to write songs. Music for our movie, I was uh, writing a song for it too. Okay. The end credits in the beginning of it, you know. For the students who weren't too keen on editing or even the music, we also have marketing the films, creating invitations, creating flyers, writing the, a description of the film, the blurb, the tagline. They made these great f posters that, in my opinion, could be used you know, outside of a theater. And the idea behind this lesson was to sort of like sell their film. You know, How could they um, sh show this poster to the public and get the public interested in their film just by showing them one work of art? Well, this year, we were just so fortunate. The program was such a success, and uh, the films were so powerful and just so insightful. We're making an impact. The museum, Taller, BPA, Congreso, Esperanza Academy. It's a great program. I hope it has a long future. And we want to continue it in the future by maybe extending the program throughout the year so that we can keep these teens involved and especially if they're motivated towards film and filming and the arts to really keep them um, to give them the support because more and more schools aren't providing the support that students need to succeed and arts organizations and expression in the arts is a way for them to to have something extra to get them into college to get them the jobs that they want and I just I feel so strongly that this program needs to continue and be more of a support for students. Hello. Hello. Yeah, all that, all that. <laughs>